Bismillahirrahman Nir Rahim. Kitab al Takdir. Book of Destiny. By G. A. Parway. Translated by Khalid M. Said. Chapter 13 14. You exalt and degrade whoever you wish. A verse from Surah al Imran is traditionally translated thus Say you, O Allah. O Master of the Realm, you give territory to whoever you wish and take away territory from whoever you wish. And you exalt or degrade whoever you want. In your hand lies all good. Verily, you have control over all things. 3. 25. Maulana Mahmud al-Hassan. The common man is not usually concerned with reign and empire. Social status, however, is important to most people. In most societies of today's world, material wealth has come to be the yardstick for one's social standing. Examples of, rags to riches, regardless of the means, and vice versa, are increasingly seen as marks of high and low social status, respectively, and as evidence of Allah's direct control over an individual's fortune. Meanings of Ezra and Zillah before attempting to interpret this particular verse, and others like it, in the Quranic spirit, let me make a few introductory points. Primarily, Ezza in Arabic means power, intensity and dominance while Zilla is subjugation, weakness and breaking down. The meaning in which these two words are used in Urdu are represented in the Quran by Takrim and Tawheen, respectively. Secondarily, the material concept of life holds sway over the world today according to which possession of material wealth, and not personal character, guarantees one a high social standing. Also, the traditional interpretation of this verse, that Allah exalts or degrades one at his own sweet will and whim is refuted by the verse itself through Bay Yada Kal Care. In your hand lies all good. I. E. Degradation, does not stem from Allah. Let us now discuss the topic proper. Independence, sovereignty etc. have already been discussed in detail in chapter. 6. Destiny of nations. Conditions for achieving sovereign status. Here, we should look at the conditions laid down by the Quran for achieving sovereign status. These conditions, rules, the called will of Allah, Surah Anbiya says, and we had written in the Zabor, and, for that matter, in every divine book, after having given the necessary instructions, that, as fundamental law, the earth shall be inherited by our capable people. This fundamental law embodies a universal message, and truth for all people who follow our laws. 21. 105-106. Thus, the law of inheritance of the earth very clearly states that only the salheen, the capable, shall rule the earth. It is a pity that the term salheen, and subsequently, terms like sala, deeds, have been misinterpreted by traditional religionists to mean something very close to the English terms pious, piety, etc. But, in the Quranic sense, salheen, are people who have the ability and capability to perform a particular task. Sala, deeds are acts which develop one's capabilities. Therefore, Salheen, inheriting the control of the earth refers to people who have the double-edged ability of establishing a sovereign state, and maintaining it to establish the Quranic paradisal society. A heaven on earth, for mankind. When a group of people have the physical qualities required, they can establish sovereign states, but minus the Quran. They can be only ruthless despotic anagrams like those of the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, Genghis Khan of the Mongols, or even the present-day materialistic empires of the world. On the other hand, a capable group, having the physical qualities as well the guidance of permanent divine values, 
shall take control of society to carry out divine responsibilities on behalf of Allah. It is our promise. Firm law. That those of you who become convinced of Allah's laws, and do, sala, deeds, shall inherit the control of the earth. 24. 55. Such a state shall establish Allah's law on earth and it shall be free of fear of depression. It shall be ruled by Allah not by man. 24. 55. Importance of physical qualities. Such people are reminded by the Quran of the importance of maintaining their physical abilities and qualities. 8. 60. The Quran has illustrated this natural law with an elaborate account of Beni Israel. Children of Israel. The story of Israelites. Having narrated the story at several places in the Quran, it said in Surah Qasas. And we decided it was time for us to bestow leadership on a nation which had been weakened by being shackled in slavery. 28. 5-6. The expression used for, we decided. No read. Has two aspects. One is in the realm of Amra. 36. 2. Where manifestation of his intention follows instantaneously. The other is in the realm of Kalk where it undergoes a series of stages and is done by man. That is why, to manifest this divine program in case of Israelites, Moses was given a comprehensive plan based upon educating and training the enslaved children of Israel. Despite hard work, Moses could not get them to shed their inconsistent and mercurial temperament. Repeatedly, he told them, Surely, Allah has promised you inheritance of the earth. But, it doesn't come easy. It happens according to his law which requires you to develop the required qualities by being steadfast in this mission and being convinced that you shall triumph eventually. 7. 128. The Israelites, however, did not conform, which resulted in the promised land was banned for them for 40 years. 5. 26. Moses was instructed to let them wander in the desert of Sinai while he concentrated on raising the next generation in the right way. Ultimately, when the slavery-minded older generation had been replaced by the new young one, they rapidly took control of the land and thus, your Allah's good word to the children of Israel came true, because of their steadfastness. 7. 137. That is how we gave Beni Israel the inheritance of it. 26. 59. The meaning of money a shaw whoever he wants, whoever wants, is so brilliantly illustrated in the story of Saul. To loot in Arabic. The story of Saul. The Israelites told their messenger they were ready to go to war as soon as a commander was appointed. Their messenger informed them that Allah had appointed Saul. The Israelites objected to it on grounds of Saul's low economic status. The messenger said, Allah has chosen him over all of you because he has superior qualities of mind and body. Surely, Allah grants realm to whoever he wants. And Allah's knowledge is vast. 2. 247. Saul then set out with his army to confront Goliath. Jalut in Arabic. Verbalizing his desire thus. O our preserver. Abound us with steadfastness. 2. 250. It was in this encounter that David slew Goliath and thus. Allah granted him realm. 2. 251. Next. The Quran explains why such armed excursions become necessary. If Allah does not make men defend other men, oppression will be rife on earth. But Allah doesn't want oppression of his creatures because he is kind with his bounty to all. 2. 251. Allah's is done by man. It is quite clear that the oppressed are defended by men, not by Allah himself. 
This group of men who shield oppressed men from the atrocities of fellow men, bear both the physical and human qualities needed for such a task. This is explained in Surah Hajj. 22. 39-41. Where the convinced are permitted to take up arms. After they had acquired political sovereignty, they were clearly told that Allah will be keeping an eye on their performance. 10. 14. If they resorted to oppressing tactics, or lost their material prowess, they would be replaced by other better people, and they will not be like you. 47. 38. Let us now examine the second half of the verse in question. 3. 25. Laws for exaltation and degradation. The Quranic meaning of the term, Ezra, is power, dominance, superiority, etc. And that of, Zilla, is weakness, subjugation, inferiority, etc. Surah Fata contains a basic rule in this regard. Whoever wished to achieve, Ezra, should know that, only Allah has, the laws for real, Ezra. It is the correct and good concept of life which can rise high by apt deeds. Contrarily, people who indulge in bad activities, going against the value system given by Allah, have a severe punishment in store for them when all their ill-directed efforts are wasted. 35. 10. Surah Yunus talks about such people who help Allah in carrying out his program for human society. The Quran terms them, Aulia Allah, Allah's colleagues, and thus are free of all fear and depression. They act upon the divine system after having been convinced of it. They are set to enjoy the niceties of both worlds. This divine law is unchangeable. Since this is an exalted achievement, they would not be depressed by the discouraging attitude of the opposition because real. Ezra is only with Allah. S. Laws. 10. 62-65. Surah Nasar mentions the hypocrites who liaise with the opposition of the divine program and asks. Are they looking for, Ezra? Real. Ezra is only with Allah. 4. 139. It is a collective effort. Adopting the divine system is not individual based. One must join a society being established for this purpose, Ezra's for Allah, his messengers and the convinced. 63. 8. Contrarily, those who oppose, fight, Allah and his messenger, are degraded because Allah has ordained triumph for himself and his messengers. He is mighty and dominant. That is why his shall be done. 58. 20-21. Ezra, from good deed. Surah Yunus says, Those who do good deeds beget good, and more. Their faces will not be darkened with zilla. Contrarily, those who do bad deeds beget badness accordingly and zilla will degrade them. 10. 26 to 27. The mighty children of Israel fell to a life of degradation and misery. Zilla and Maskana because they rejected the divine law. 2. 61. 3. 113. Ezra, as respect. Ezra, meaning social esteem and respect. As current among Urdu speakers. Is represented in the Quran by, Takrim, while. The term for humiliation and disrespect is, Torheen. Basically, the Quranic principle in this regard is that respect may only be earned by one's character and behavior. 49. 13. Allah's sincere men who deserve paradise because of their deeds are worthy of respect. 37. 42. Surah Yasin talks about the convinced one who raised the voice of truth in the face of strong opposition saying, if only my people knew that Allah has blessed me with bounties and has made me one of the respected. 36. 27. Contrarily, 
The Quran terms the consequence of wrong deed as Azrabe Mahina Azab Alhun, the humiliating punishment. Surah Hajj contains the mechanics of such punishment. And those who reject and refute our laws are the ones who have a humiliating punishment. 22. 57. Elsewhere, people making fun of Allah's laws are said to get a humiliating punishment. 45. 9. In principle, it says in Surah Hamim that humiliating punishment is brought upon men by their own deeds. 41. 17. Misplaced standard of respect. The commonly accepted standards of respect and esteem in human societies. Political or economic power attained through tyrannical and oppressive means. A totally misplaced. Such respect is destined to end up in humiliating punishment. This law has been illustrated by the Quran with a figurative example of a person, brought into hell, who will be served extremely humiliating food with a reminder. Taste. It now, this humiliating punishment. You considered yourself to be very powerful and respectable. 44. 49. Is et al asma before the hereafter, such misplaced respect and power in here has been termed as Izzet al Azma. 2. 206. The weakening power, the Ezer in such cases gives an illusionary sense of respect and power. Really, it leads one to ism, weakness, and results in a humiliating punishment. 46. 20. Status according to deeds. In a fair. Quranic. Society. Eza. Power. And takrim. Respect. Are achieved on the basis of one's personal attributes, character and good deeds done. 46. 19. Every respectable person is. Respected. 11. 3. Every knowledgeable person attains status accordingly as Allah knows about their deeds. 57. 11. And he, because of their work, becomes their colleague. 6. 128. We are hopefully ready now to ponder over the topic verse in question. 3. 25. And look at its Quranic interpretation in the light of all the above. Say, O Allah, you possess the real power. You give sovereign power to those who follow your laws and strip of it those who go against them. Power and degradation come according to your rules only. It could not have been haphazard, lawless, because you are the source of good alone. You have set standards to everything. Indeed, you are worthy of being Allah divine support and help. We have already seen the verse 6. 128. Which says that Allah becomes a colleague of men in their deeds. He is the senior partner. 1. In this arrangement. His partnership is known by his support and help. Taid and Nusra. 1. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, is reported to have said during his last moments but he is the senior partner. That is to say that Allah and man are senior and junior, respectively, partners in this working arrangement. Meaning of Nusra. Nusra in Arabic is used for irrigation of land through rain and long, winding streams of a valley. Obviously, rain benefits only those farmers who work according to natural agricultural principles. Therefore, an individual as well as a group of people who resolves to carry out the divine program, and works accordingly, sees plentiful fruit born by their efforts. Oh, convinced, if you help Allah, he will help you. 47. 7. Allah helps those who help him. Man must initiate a joint venture by Allah and man. Consequently, Allah rewards man a plenty and with steadfastness. 47. 7. The verse goes on to say, 
and those who reject have failure and disappointment coming as their efforts do not bear fruit and are wasted. 47. 7. That is so because they dislike the message given by Allah and that is why their efforts remain fruitless. 49. 7. The Muslims, who had emigrated to Medina in the divine cause, are referred to thus. They help Allah and his messenger and hence are true to their cause and in their claim of being convinced. 59. 8. Elsewhere, such Muslims were referred to thus. Certainly, Allah helps those who help him. 22. 40. In another instance, this point has been elaborated upon in the following manner. Allah is the one who sent his messenger with his guidance, I. E. The really true code of life, so that it triumphs over all false systems no matter how annoying it is to those who want to follow and obey more gods than the one. O oh, the convinced, let us tell you a basic principle. Normally, every person in the world desires to benefit from every transaction they make. But, it is not always so. Wouldn't you, therefore, like to know of a loss-free business. Let us tell you of such a business which never fails and thus saves you from severe torture. It is this. Be convinced of the credibility and permanence of Allah's program being established by his messenger. Give your utmost to it, using your wealth, even your lives, if you have to. If you ponder carefully, you will see all the potential profit in this venture. This value system will equip you to avert all possible disasters. It will bless you with an everlasting paradisical life. Allegorically, comfortable abode in evergreen gardens. Both here and in the hereafter. That is really a monumental achievement for whoever gets it. Furthermore, you will get so much else you like. Allah's support and your victories are nigh. O Messenger, Give the convinced these glad tidings. 61. 9-14. As we have seen earlier, success in an operation requires. 1. A firm conviction and. 2. Carrying the operation out with the right. Tools and in the correct manner. Swood needed for. Nusra. Surah al elaborates this point so eloquently. We sent our messengers with clear laws divine books, so that men can have a fair and just society. And we sent down iron and steel to make swords with, symbolizing law enforcement power, which is hard and firm and can be very beneficial to mankind if used under divine guidance. This has been done as that Allah can see who among you helps him and his messenger, convinced of the hitherto unseen 57. 25. The Arabic term for unseen is bil gaib. And here means the expected results, hitherto unrealized and therefore unseen, of efforts to establish the divine program. This very conviction of the future has been put down as the fundamental requirement for success. 2. 3. Also, men expect Allah's help from the unseen while he expects the same from men. Aptly, he asks the convinced to become Allah's helpers. 61. 14. Christ said the same to his followers who readily complied. Battle of Beda. The first ever practical example of this mutual. Allah and man. Operation was the Battle of Beda which was fought between the convinced trying to establish the divine order fighting in the way of Allah, and their opponents, fighting for transgression. The Quran said, and Allah thus helps whoever so wishes. 13. 12. It may also be, interpreted as, Allah thus helps according to, his laws, help through angels. This help comes rationally not accidentally. It contains lessons for those who ponder. 3. 12. This divine help was to be the source of happiness for the convinced. 30. 
5. The help by angels in such battles has been explained by the Quran as psychological. 8. 9 to 10. So that they remain steadfast. 8. 12. This steadfastness brings divine support with the condition that the convinced display perseverance and obedience of Allah's laws. 3. 122 to 125. Your 100 shall triumph over 200 of the opponents because Allah is with the steadfast. 8. 66. The way to ensure divine help is to obey Allah and his messengers, not to quarrel among yourselves because if you squabble, you will be swept away. So, be steadfast. Allah is with the steadfast. 8. 46. Dot. Remember, Allah helps those who remain steadfast. They then become invincible. But, if he abandons you, who is there to help you? 3. 159. If you are convinced, in the real sense, you will triumph over all. 3. 138. Chapter 14. He forgives or punishes whoever he wants. Parts of some verses in the Quran contain phrases like the following. Yak fur le manyasha o wa yo arzibo manyasha o. 3. 128 which are traditionally translated as, Allah forgives whoever he wishes and punishes whoever he wishes. Such interpretation can only, and has, led to a concept of God who is whimsical, unpredictable, unsystematic and moody. This divine behavior is much like that of earthly absolute monarchs of, royal disposition, in the words of the famous Persian poet Saadi Shirazi. This is quite contrary to the Quranic concept of Allah. Let us have a look at it. Punishment. Razab. Is usually taken to be eternal fortune in hell. But. The Quranic use of the term. Razab. Encompasses much more. Consequences of all wrong human actions. Realizable both here and in the hereafter. Is. Razab. In Quranic terms. So much so that a. Sentence from a court of law is also. Razab. Marfera. Does not mean, forgiveness. Linguistically, it means to arrange for protection. Please refer to chapter 4 where we saw that there is a period of wait between an action and its result. If someone uses this period accordingly, the probable bad consequences of an action can be averted. That is. Marfera. Protection. Let us now see who deserves Razab and how. Surah Marada talks about the sins committed by the Jews and says, Very bad it is what they have sent on for themselves. They deserve divine punishment and shall be punished accordingly. 5. 80. Surah Ali Imran, after having talked about sins by the Jews, rejecting the divine law, murdering their prophets and social reformers, says, Tell them, O Messenger, of the impending torturous punishment. 3. 20. A little further on, the Surah says, Those who reject the divine laws are punished severely. With Razab, in this world and also in the hereafter. 3. 55. Also, those who reject Allah's laws get Razab, in here and in the hereafter and can never buy themselves out of it, even if they spend all the money in the world. 5. 36. Surah An'am says, Those who deny our guidance, shall be subjected to punishment. Razab, because of their transgression. 6. 49. Surah Torba. The opponents of the Muslims are under the erroneous arrogance because of their wealth and numbers. This very misconception shall lead them in the battlefield. 9. 52. 9. 85. Surah Hud. These people neither think nor care, nor listen to anyone, nor see where they are going. How can they escape punishment? 11. 18-24. 2. 7. 
Some verses use Rama as an antonym to Azam. Surah al Imran says, O the convinced! Take care and not behave like those who, after having had clear guidance from Allah, began squabbling and split up in factions. They are the ones who will get a big punishment when the consequences of all actions will be realized. On that occasion, some faces will come alight as a result of their good deeds, while others will go dark because they had reverted to rejection of Allah's laws after having adopted them. They will be told to have the taste of the punishment for your rejection. The bright-faced people, at the same time, shall be under Allah's Rama. Safety of protection. 3. 104 to 106. It is obvious from all the above that punishment comes to men because of their own actions. Law of returns or the law of Allah's will. Interpretation of Muni Ashaw. The verses where the subject of Muni Ashaw is Allah. Whosoever he wants. Refer to Allah's will. Surah Araf reports Moses praying to Allah. O Allah, bestow on us the niceties of here and the hereafter. Allah replied. If you wish to avoid my punishment, be informed that. My punishment befalls according to. The law of. My will. Under systematic rules, not whimsical decisions. As to my. Rama. Safety of protection. It covers the entire universe but it is destined only for those among men who abide by our laws, establish a universal system of sustenance and are fully convinced of the validity of our laws. Also for those who will follow our illiterate messenger, mentioned in the Torah and the Bible, who will enact the good and prohibit the bad. 7. 155-156. Shaw Beni Israel. O Messenger. Tell my adherents to converse nicely among themselves and be fair in their dealings because the devil wants to split you up in warring factions. Don't follow him as he is your sworn enemy. Allah knows what you do. If. Your deeds are. According to Allah's will, you will deserve his Rama. Safety of protection. Otherwise, punishment. Azab will befall you. It is entirely up to them to choose between Allah's Rama and Azab. O Messenger! You have not been appointed to force him to make the right choice. 17. 54. Let us now examine, Marfara. It can have two applications. Two applications of, Marfara. 1. In an epidemic, people with a greater power of resistance escape it, in the Quranic setup, this type of marfara comes with precautionary measures men may take against calamities. 2. The epidemic victimizes one who survives but is left very weak and recovers fully when properly treated. In the Quranic setup, this type of marfara comes with, torba. Repentance. The Quranic concept of, torba, may be illustrated by the example of a wayfarer who, taking a wrong turning, goes away from the intended destination. As soon as he realizes the mistake, he turns back and returns to the spot where the wrong turning was taken. This return is known as Torba, but obviously, returning to the spot of mistake is not enough. One must resume the journey on the right path that is, good deeds, in the Quranic terms. This concept is elaborated in Surah Nisa. To Allah, Torba, is for those who happen to make an error due to ignorance but return as soon as they realize it. In that case Allah, his law, also returns to them. 4. 17. Subsequent to this first step, and then if the returnee does good deeds out of conviction, only then shall he be among the successful. 28. 67. The other application of, Marfera, is based upon the principle. Good deeds neutralize bad one. Certainly. Good deeds push away the bad ones. 11. 
114. All this should clarify the verse. 3. 128. At head of this chapter. That is, whoever stubbornly refuses to learn from mistakes, gets, azab. But one who amends one's mistakes will escape it. Punishment and forgiveness. It is illustrated in Surah Ma'ada where a thief's punishment is mentioned. The verse goes on to say, And whoever returns after his wrong deed, and does good, Allah shall return to him. Surely, Allah is the provider of Mafara, safety of protection, and Rama, niceness. But, why should Mafara and Azab go hand in hand? It is because the Quran wanted to create a realistic balance between the two extremes of the Jewish. All punishment, no forgiveness. And the Christian. All mercy, no punishment. Value systems. The Quran says. Don't they know that it is Allah who controls supreme over all universe? He does it through his laws. Similar divine laws have been suggested for human societies so that the application of punishment, razab, and safety of protection, mafara, is done according to laws and principles given by Allah. 5. 38-40. It follows, therefore, that a culprit should be punished only if he, she persists in criminal activity. Repentance and reformation must result in forgiveness. Whether you expose or conceal whatever is in your hearts, Allah takes it all into account. Then, punishment or forgiveness is decided according to his laws, and Allah has set laws for everything. 2. 284. Elsewhere, whosoever so wishes may get, through one's actions, punishment. Razab, or niceness. Ramatan. 29. 21. Allah has no favorite offspring. Surah Ma'ada refers to the Jews and the Christians claiming to be God's favored children which exempted them from punishment. The Quran replied by asking, Punishment in the hereafter aside, why does Allah punish you in here? Allah has no children, favorite or otherwise. He punishes or protects people according to his laws as to him alone is the control of the entire universe. 5. 18. The same surah explains. Allah has promised safety or protection and great rewards to those who are convinced of his laws and then do good deeds accordingly. 5. 9. In Surah Fath, after having spoken of the worthy attributes of Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, and the people with him says, Allah has promised safety of protection and great reward to the convinced who do good deeds. 48. 29. Surah Hud gives safety of protection and great reward as the return of good deeds and steadfastness. 11. 11. This is repeated in 33. 35. Surah Azab, after having listed the attributes of Muslim men and women, says, Allah has for them ready the safety of protection and a great reward. 33. 35. Contrarily, polytheism, cannot get safety of protection. 4. 48. 4. 116. People who commit rejection of Allah's laws and are unfair and persist cannot get mafara. 4. 168. The basic principle of reward and punishment is so beautifully given in the following verse. Why would Allah punish you if you are convinced of the validity of his laws and use his bounties properly? 4. 147. Punishment according to circumstances. Another important aspect of the Quranic system of punishment and forgiveness is the individual circumstances of the accused involved. For example, two culprits of the same crime should not have a similar sentence if their individual circumstances differ in background, i.e. 
upbringing, education, awareness etc. That is why, the Quran proposes that women of possession. 1. Be given half the normal sentence. 4. 25. Whereas ladies of the messenger's family were to be sentenced twice of the usual. 33. 30-32. 1. At the advent of Islam, buying, selling and possessing women for concubinage and other purposes, was part of life. The Quran refers to them as, those possessed by your right hands. That was to be temporary for all practical purposes. Subsequently, the Quran outlawed the practice. In addition to the individual, collective situation of a society must also be taken into consideration because, when voices spread widely in a society, evil takes over. 76. 7. Sparing no one from its effect. Collective punishment. Therefore, the convinced must safeguard against such a situation, and take care of such an evil as it does not confine itself only to the wrongdoers. 8. 25. For example, a broken dam floods not only the areas of bad workmen guilty of a faulty job but also those completely detached from the situation. Individual are bound by society. That is why the Quran emphasizes reformation of society as a whole which will automatically affect individuals. Al-Din is a social system which brings peace to its members. This was the point made by Omar ibn al-Khattab, the second caliph, when he punished the employer whose mistreatment drove some of his employees to stealing food. In another instance, Omar suspended the punishment for stealing food, just enough to quench hunger, during famine. The misconception that salvation and forgiveness is not dependent upon man's deeds but on Allah's whims and moods has sent Muslims down the deepest pits of destruction as a nation. Requests for forgiveness. This erroneous idea has led them to beliefs and practices such as this. No matter how many wrong or bad deeds one commits, Allah will forgive one if one recites 33 times the chant of, Please Allah, forgive, after every prayer. The Quranic truth, however, is. This is the paradise you are inherited with because of your deeds. 43. 72. Today, Muslims believe that they will enter paradise only because of Allah's benevolent mood and momentary sweet will. The fact of the matter is that the Quran has said, Do you think you will enter paradise easily? Nay, you haven't yet gone through the harsh stages like peoples of bygone ages, so harsh that the earth shook under their feet and the messenger and his companions wondered when Allah's help would come. Allah consoled them by glad tidings of the imminent divine support. 2. 214. Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, is reported to have said, Paradise exists under the shade of swords. Pride in sin sin or Allah will perish you. Sadly, that is not the end of the story. Incredible as it may appear, the fact is that one of the two most authentic works of Hadith the Messenger's tradition, Muslim, reports the following from Muhammad. By the one who possesses my self, if you don't sin at all, Allah will remove you and replace you with those who will indulge in sins and then seek Allah's forgiveness. No wonder the crime and sin rates are unabated in most Muslim societies. Mystics, too. Adherents to the mystical tradition, Sufis, have reported fantastic stories to make the point. One particular episode. A devotee, after having worshipped Allah for twelve years in a jungle, heard the divine. Say what you want. Searching for a reply, he noticed a sage. Actually, the devil. Appeared and suggested asking for justice. His request for justice was replied by. Okay. You sat and worshipped on a stone for twelve years. Justice demands that this stone sits atop you for twelve years.
After those painful twelve years, Allah inquired of his request once again. This time, the mystic, having learned his lesson the hard way, asked for Allah's benevolence. He was rewarded by appointment to the rank of Qutub, a higher ranking in the traditional mystic hierarchy, with the admonition, Remember, justice is demanded by the devilish. Muslims always seek our benevolence. Saint Paul's influence. The source of such ideas appears to be the Christian dogmas invented by Saint Paul. In one of his letters in the New Testament, he writes, You'll have been salvaged because of belief. It is not because of your deeds. It is God's gift. Afson, 2, 8-9. Elsewhere. Therefore, we conclude that man is considered righteous because of belief, not because of deeds of religion. To the Romans. 3. 28. This established the Christian dogma of God is mercy. Such concepts found their way into Muslim philosophy, supported by fabricated traditions like No one among you shall enter paradise because of deeds. From Taj al Uruz, Toliwi Islam Trust, 25b, Gulberg 2, Lahore, Pakistan, Toliwi Islam at gmail.com.